Okay, good morning, guys. Um, just to be just to be sure you can see my uh, my welcome slide, uh, just just let me know in the chat box, and I'll kick this I'll kick this off. And obviously, if you can hear me, that would be great. Just let me know in the chat box, uh, yes or no. Uh, ah, thank you, Daniel. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Brilliant. Thanks, Scott. So, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. In this webinar, the plan is to go over an introduction to, to technical analysis, which is ultimately des designed to uh, for those for those traders just dipping their toes into the world of you know charts and technical analysis. I must be clear that this presentation, thanks Bruce, thank you Bradley, excellent. So I must be clear that this presentation is only scratches the surface in regards to technical analysis. You know, TA is a broad study, but hopefully this presentation will be enough to, to encourage you to further investigate all things you know, TA. So every single trader at one point in time was brand new to, you know, to all, all, all technical concepts where everything seemed overwhelming. I'm sure most of us here I'm sure most of us have seen there's an absolute truckload of of um, of technical material on the internet. I mean, just Google technical analysis. At the time of creating this presentation, I noted an eye popping 1.85 billion results uh, were generated in half a second. So, you know, so with so much information available, it's important to keep your study structured and focused on on what is most significant to you and then be able to apply your newfound knowledge to become more informed and ultimately profitable traders or investors. As a heads up, I'm going to assume that uh, most of us here know their way around a chart. If not, we do have old webinars explaining the, the mechanics behind you know, uh, chart functions. If it's okay, I'll, I'll refer to technical analysis as TA going forward. Um, it just makes my life a little bit easier. So also for any of us interested in a recording of the presentation, you can find this either through the uh, F FP Markets website uh, under resources, I believe, and also on U uh, FPM's YouTube channel. Now, as always, guys, bear with me. Okay, now as always, let me just quickly run through the disclaimer on screen. So the information contained in this material is intended for general advice only. It does not take into account your investment objectives, financial situation or particular needs. Look guys, essentially all this means is anything discussed in today's presentation is intended for educational purposes only and does not constitute um, investment, uh, investment advice. Okay, so for for those for those unaware, for those new to these presentations, uh, I just want to quickly introduce myself, and uh, so we all know who's behind the mic. So my name's Aaron Hill, and I'm part of the research team here at FP Markets. Now, as you can see, I have more than eleven years. It's now twelve years uh, trading experience. I also have the CMT levels one and two. Now that is the Chartered Market Technician qualification. For anyone interested in technical analysis, I would wholeheartedly recommend this course. Um, it really, it really, it really shocks me how deep and how diverse technical analysis really is. And I assumed, given my experience, it would be a breeze, but it really and truly wasn't. There's so much to it. There, there's such a broad uh, landscape. Um, it really shocked me, actually. Uh, I also received the CFTE qualification in 2020, and that was simply because I, I passed the CMT levels uh, uh, level two. Now, do bear in mind, CMT level two is, is supposed to be, according to many of the students, the hardest uh, uh, level. There's also level three, um, but CMT uh, two, level two, is apparently supposed to be the uh, most difficult. As you can see, I'm also the technical analyst for FP Markets. So in terms of what I, I, I focus on, what I largely focus on is price action. Now, for any price action traders here, they will note that price action is quite an in-depth in subject. Um, it's not just simply uh, support and resistance, trend lines and candlestick analysis. There's, there's, it, 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 
price action forms an umbrella to to many to many of the uh, to many concepts. I also look at Fibonacci, which I believe personally falls under uh, price action as well. So when I when I look at Fibonacci, I'm looking at uh, concepts such as Fibonacci clusters and also harmonics. Now for anyone that's familiar with harmonics, I focus on AB equals CD formations, along with GAT, uh, GAT, um, BAT and Gartley patterns. Um, I don't really focus on any, uh, any of the other formations. It's just uh, those two. I also, I also focus on the relative strength index. That should be index. I apologize. Uh, relative strength index, the RSI. Uh, and as many uh, anyone that follows this will note that this is a, a momentum oscillator that uh, follows yeah uh, f uh, uh, gauges the the momentum on a chart and and finally I also look at chart psychology now this is not something that I can give a definition a, I can give a broad definition but this is something I've followed I've I've picked up over the years of of chart study and 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 speaking to many traders experienced traders. And what it entails really is looking at the charts and looking where the psychology of buyers and sellers are likely positioned on the charts according to technical analysis. So, and then what, what the idea is to look where the stop losses are. And, uh, uh, and when, you, when you observe a stop run, uh, you try to take advantage of that, assuming that there's a level that you can trade. Uh, so for instance, if we're breaking a support, we look for a level below that support then we can buy into the, all those sell stops below that support. So as for presentation topics, we're, we're targeting three core subjects today. Um, a brief history of TA. Here, we'll introduce, here I'll introduce the, the, um, the, uh, the concept of TA and briefly dive into some of its you know, long and, and colorful history. Next up on the menu, we have the basic principle of technical analysis, you know, the trend. So looking at things like the definition of trend, retracements, pullbacks, and all that good stuff. Finally, we'll, we'll look at some chart patterns and candlestick formations. As I'm sure we can appreciate going into going into these configurations in detail uh, the chart patterns and candlestick uh, formations is is really quite beyond the scope of this webinar so we'll look so we'll look at so what we'll do is we'll look at a couple of popular variations and then go into detail later in intermediate and advanced uh, presentations also following this we'll have a quick q a session uh, sh should any questions arise, but feel free to ask the questions during the presentation if it uh, uh, you know converges with uh, the current uh, content. Okay, the concept of TA essentially involves using historical price action and volume data to forecast market movement. This can include the basics such as trend studies, adopting technical tools such as uh, uh, like trend lines and uh, as you can see here, a trend line and uh, support and resistance. Or more commonly referred to as, you know, uh, support zones and resistance zones. Uh, trend lines can also be considered zones as well if you include the bodies. So you can um, draw, so for instance, just in a quick example, you can draw a trend line from the extreme, the lower shadow to the next lower shadow. And you can also draw a, a, a another um, correspond a parallel line uh, using the candle body. So that gives you almost a buffer with your uh, trend lines. Although plotting support and resistance levels may seem, you know, may seem like a simple task, it certainly did to me when I first was introduced to it. It can be quite a detailed subject with many traders adopting different methods. And I think that's where the confusion comes from because we follow a number of traders and they all have their own way of interpreting and uh, applying support and resistance. Therefore, learning this can take many screen hours to attain a level of, shall we say, proficiency. What I mean by this is having the ability to plot levels that you're confident in. You know, we as traders can also use technical indicators. And I'm sure some of us here do use, uh, have, have adopted technical indicators such as the relative strength index uh, or RSI. 
uh, the moving average convergence divergence or, or MACD and, you know, moving a uh, moving averages, for example, uh, to help analyze the FX market or, or any market you trade. Uh, but these are subjects we're going to move move on to in the next couple of weeks. It's also worth noting that traders have access, they do have access to volume indicators. Now, this may be a, a little advanced for newer traders, but please bear with me. So for the retail Forex market, that is OTC or over-the-counter volume, this generally refers to the number of ticks. In other words, price changes that appeared in the time interval. So the volume indicators you see on MT4 uh, tend to represent what's known as tick data. Now, when I say price changes, I'm not referring to transactions. I'm talk <coughs> excuse me. So I'm talking about if, say, the the euro dollar moves from one point twenty to one point twenty. Sorry, let me just let me just uh, annotate this because this will be easier for me for you to follow. Uh, excuse my uh, my um, writing as well. So, for instance, if euro dollar moves from one spot using five decimal places to one spot to zero 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 uh two they look like sixes they're all zeros um what this means is there there could have could have been between this area here there could have been 20 200 or even you know even two two thousand transactions behind this small move to take out all the willing offers between this area here. So it's not just transactions, okay? Um, we, need, we need enough transactions to punch through the willing offers at this point here to reach this new value. Um, this, of, this, of course, is, is the point. I'm just going to refer to these are the points I'm referring to here. So this was a very, very small move. This wasn't even a pip. This was just a very, very small move. This was a... Um, uh, yeah, point two. So this, of course, is unlike the futures markets uh, uh, and, and also options markets, uh, uh, which are both also derivative markets. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just uh, get rid of this. Okay. So as I said, this is unlike the futures or options markets, which are obviously derivative market, derivative markets as well, which largely, but they largely trade through exchanges where volume is, is calculated by counting the number of you know, contracts that have been bought and sold over a given time period. Um, in capital markets, so common capital markets uh, are the, the stock market and the bond market. Uh, volume for the stock market that is um, is counted as the uh, as the total number of shares that are actually traded or bought or sold during the trading day. Now, for bonds, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if any bond traders are here, uh, bonds are largely traded OTC, and therefore accurate volume can be a challenge, as it as as it is within the FX uh, uh, domain. Uh, sorry if I <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry if I diverged a touch here. Hopefully, this did not confuse uh, too many of too many of us uh, newer traders. I don't see any questions, so hopefully, we're all still following along. So with this in mind, where did, where did technical analysis begin? What's interesting is um, if you Google uh, who invented technical analysis, uh, uh, more than 50 billion results show. But for me, at least the first result showed uh, Charles Dow as the inventor behind TA. Although, although Dow occupies a large space in the TA realm, um, which I'll be touching on sh uh, shortly. Some aspects of TA, according to my research, be began to appear in Amsterdam via a, a Joseph de la Vega's account of the Dutch financial markets in the 17th century. In fact, I believe in December of 2018, I think it was, 
a, a book written by Joseph de la Vega in 1680, 16, I think it was 1688, I went on sale at Sotheby's, uh, a rare books and manuscripts um, online auction for an estimated 200 to 300,000 uh, US, do uh, US dollars. Unfortunately, I was una uh, unable to find out how much, how much it eventually went for. But in this book, what's interesting is the four principles um, he, he sets out uh, and, and, are st and are still reasonably applicable to any new trader today. So let's just quickly run through them. So on the off chance that you're wrong, never give anyone advice to buy and sell shares. I can only assume this means avoid, avoid giving, giving investment advice because individual sh uh, trades are random. Uh, there, there is absolutely no way of knowing if one single trade will be a winner or loser. This is key, guys. This really is key for, especially for newer traders. You cannot base your your system's success on 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 the fact on on the basis of one trade. I always look at my trades in, in samples, so sample of twenty, sample of thirty trades, and that way you can get an average of what's going on behind the scenes. One trade means very, very little, as long as you obviously control your risk and uh, 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 things like that. So the second one is take every gain without showing remorse about missed profits. In other words, don't kick yourself for missing the absolute peak or trough. Very rarely are we going to take profit at the peak or, or take profit at the trough uh, if you're selling. So just do not kick yourself about that. Um, yeah, that, that's the point I believe he was trying to make there. Uh, profits on the exchange are treasures of goblin, goblins. I believe this means a profit today could be, could be a loss tomorrow. Uh, I don't really want to go more, much more into that because this is all, this is an assumption of mine. I'm not sure exactly what he meant by that. Um, but yeah, so I believe this means a profit today could mean, uh, could be a loss tomorrow. Uh, finally, who, <clears throat> whoever wants to truly thrive as a trader has to have patience and money. You know, I'm sure we can all relate to this statement, which is pretty much self-explanatory and well documented by many, many traders. Uh, patience and funds to trade uh, with are crucial in the trading world. Uh, without these two, you simply cannot, uh, you simply cannot function. So many also credit um, technical analysis to, I'm going to try to pronounce this uh, gentleman's name, uh, Min Minis Minusa Homer. And I do hope I came close to pronouncing it correctly. Um, the reason why Homer um, is credited as a, shall we say, a pioneer of TA is he is said to have invented candlestick charting, which is considered I'm sure most of us will agree uh, the backbone to uh, technical analysis to this very day. Uh, Steve Neeson over in the left here is responsible for bringing uh, for bringing candlestick uh, patterns to the Western world in his um, I think it was 1990 or 1991 book. Um, and this was called, and as you can see, this is called Japanese candlestick charting techniques. And uh, this is widely available on Amazon. And um, this was one of the first books I, I, I read when I was diving into the wonderful world of technical analysis. Uh, the history of TA in the US, however, as far as I'm aware, kicked off in the early 20th century. Uh, uh, the most credited work, come, uh, uh, work came from the writings of this reasonably uh, good looking chap, Charles Henry Dow. It's a theory that has been built on, um, that has been built on over, over uh, throughout recent decades and now forms and now forms the basis of modern, um, of modern, uh, technical analysis. However, Dow's writing was, was never formally put into, put into text uh, until this gentleman here, Robert Ray, um, wrote a book called the Dow theory and this is well worth a read if you're interested in the history behind Dow theory and uh, the, the its assumptions and things like that yes yeah, so do 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 check that out if you're interested 
So an important part of any TA method uh, is obviously the trend. You know, a lot of investment terms are thrown around these days and um, just bear with me. Okay. So as I said, a lot of investment terms are thrown around these days, uh, but trend is one of uh, those terms that um, all traders must understand. So for those completely new to charting, a trend, you know, a, a, a trend um, is what many traders and investors pursue to make profits in the markets. So without trends, we can, um, we, it is difficult to make money. And remember, trends are fractal. Uh, they form on the H1 time frame. They also form on the one minute time frame. They also form on the monthly time frame. That's what I mean by fractal. So I'm sure most of us here have heard of the old adage, the trend is your friend, and it really is true if you manage to time the trend correctly and have the patience and the risk management to, uh, to ride out pullbacks and retracements. So an upward trend, or as you can see on the screen, an upward trend or, or uptrend as, um, occurs when price, price action clocks higher highs, consecutive higher highs, along with consecutive higher lows. Um, <clears throat> oops, I should have added that already. Um, so look, it's a relatively simple configuration, um, though do be aware it's seldom, a, a, it's seldom as, as uniform as you will see on this slide. Now, I have seen your question uh, uh, regarding if I could explain how Dow theory works in, in Forex trading. Um, Dow theory was actually um, applied for uh, applied to the the history was uh, the indexes, but I will go over the basics of the trend if that's what you. Uh, it, so the question is, could you please explain how Dow theory works in forex trading? I'll try to cover that at the end if there's time. Um, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so it, it, and then I'll just um, and then I can carry on with this uh, uh, the presentation without diverging too much. So. Moving on, the next, uh, uh, the same can be said, obviously, for a downtrend, right? So, um, and, and that's formed by a series of lower highs and lower lows. Look, I understand this is a very basic stuff, and some of the traders here will be, you know, much more advanced than this. Uh, this is just for the beginner traders, and it's really just uh, recapping on what we touched on uh, in previous webinars, so we're all on the same page. Again, let me just emphasize that it's rarely as uniform as this on the uh, live charts, but I hope you get the gist of what I'm trying to uh, demonstrate here, which is essentially to look for clear swings, clear swings with, on, on the chart, especially if you're a newer trader. So newer traders, what they do is they get caught up in the maze of local swings within clearer moves. So this for me is a clear move clear down move but what happens is newer traders get caught up in the local swings within this that's okay if you're an experienced trader and you understand uh, the primary trend is to the downside now the primary trend is something i've taken from dow theory so the primary trend is the long-term trend the secondary trend is the corrections uh, this may actually answer the uh, previous question so the as i said the primary trend trend is the main trend the secondary trend are the corrections and the minor fluctuations are the, are the small uh, local variations within this. And uh, what happens is newer traders, unfortunately, they get called up in these minor variations and do not take the bigger picture into consideration. Hence why I always say multi-time frame analysis is, is very, very, is very key to, to um, understanding where you are on the, in the overall picture. Okay, <clears throat> this may make it a little clearer in, in terms of trends. So on the slide, we have the pound dollar daily chart to the bottom left and uh, to the upside, we have a, uh, to the upside on the right, we have the uh, dollar cad uh, daily time frame. So the, uh, let me just, so as you can see, um, the pound dollar chart has been in an uptrend, um, since the unit touched a low of around, I think it was 0.1409. Uh, 
um, in the first quarter of 2020, right in the midst of in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, do bear in mind these are older charts, uh, which are simply here to help us visualize trends on a chart. Now we have clear. So with this, with with the pound dollar chart, we have clear higher highs, higher lows, followed by subsequent higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. It went a bit. Um, uh, you know, it, you would have had to dive down to the um, more more local uh, swings at this point here, but this would have been the next higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. I'm sure you get the picture. So as you can see, it's not as uniform as obviously the the um, the uh, the pre-drawn example. And obviously on the dollar cad, we have a downtrend which is focused more uh, focused on lower lows, lower highs lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Now, guys, if you don't understand what a lower low and lower high uh, is, um, it's essentially a swing in the market. But we did do uh, our pre the pre previous webinar did touch on this in more detail. OK, just to try and expand on this, you will note that a trend never ever follows a straight line it would be lovely if it did but it doesn't price always ebbs and flows so with this you may have heard the terms pullbacks and retracements do note that some technicians uh, use the term throwback for a retracement so this is a, a retracement a retracement but do note that some technicians, especially technicians that have learned through the CMT program, would label these as throwbacks uh, generally. Unless this is the primary trend, as I explained, this is the longer term trend, this would be considered a then a retracement or secondary correction. Uh, the retracement is essentially a smaller counter, te uh, counter trend movement within the larger trend. Uh, retracements um, are always corrections, as you can see, um, or, or downward corrections uh, to the principal trend, or in other words, the larger trend. Uh, the length, this is, this is what I, I really want to get across, the length of the, um, the, the correction can provide us traders with crucial information as to the health of the, of the uptrend. So as you can uh, uh, an uptrend with uh, deep retracement, as, as as shown on the slide, um, suggests buyers, although we're in an uptrend, do not really have a firm grip. And sellers, you know, may be growing, growing in confidence. Now, of course, like anything in TA, just because we're seeing deep retracements, you know, maybe growing in uh, 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 just because we're seeing deeper retracements does not mean we'll we'll see a change in trend to the downside it's just simply a hint things to the upside may be slowing this is pretty self-explanatory really um <clears throat> we would need to see more evidence what well, i would need i would need to see more evidence before um, evidence that sellers could make a stronger, a stronger, um, could make a stronger entrance, such as, you know, uh, price hitting, price hitting a resistance up at this point here or something like that, or, or, or a, a trend line support breach, for example. Any questions on this, please do let me know. And, um, I'll try to get round to that. So on the other side of the coin, of course, we have an uptrend with uh, with uh, what's known as shallow retracements. Quite simple. It then shows buyers are effectively in the driving seat, so they're in control, uh, not really not really allowing sellers to get much uh, get much um, see much of the action. But again, there is never any guarantee. Buyers will continue to climb here. Um, it's just one part of the technical puzzle we can use to help make we can use to help make it, it, it in informed decisions uh, as for downtrends it's I, i'm not gonna um go into a slide with this but um it's simply the reverse of an uptrend and the retracements uh, and the retracements instead of um 
are instead labeled pullbacks. Let me just quickly draw that on so we're not lost at all. Um, so as for a downtrend, we have this kind of motion, right? And if you rem remember from the previous slide, this was a lower high, lower high, lower high, lower low, lower low, lower low. And what these are called are pullbacks. So what you're looking for is shallow pullbacks. And this, it, this essentially informs us traders that sellers uh, sellers are largely in control and could push for lower prices again if we have deeper pullbacks at this point here this could tell us that set, uh, buyers are, are are gaining the are attempting to gain the upper hand but if we have a trend line uh, breach at this point here this would add confluence to the trade or even a uh, a, a large support a large long term support at this point here uh, that could force uh, that could help add weight to um, to the um, to the idea that price would continue higher. Now we're on the final part of this uh, uh, presentation. So this is chart patterns and candlestick formations. So as I mentioned at the beginning, going into detail of uh, uh, with these patterns is beyond the scope of this webinar. But I hope I can. I hope I can hand over enough material to get your feet wet, shall we say, and uh, we'll look to build on this in the future, uh, of course, if there's demand. So as you can see, chart patterns essentially form by combining support and resistance levels and, and trend lines. In all cases, the pattern, the, the, the chart pattern, um, this, this, just let me uh, emphasize, these are chart patterns, okay? So in all cases, the patterns is uh, patterns are, shall we say, finalized or completed once price breaks out of the, uh, in this case, upper boundaries and hits the uh, take profit objective. An important point to bear in mind with uh, is that patterns will never, never, like everything in TA, right? will never mirror the um will never exactly be a mirror opposite of the uh, from example to example so they will never be the the same though each will have the characteristics or rules should i say to 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 try to form uh, to form that patterns framework traditionally we divide we also divide patterns into continuation and reversal formats though do be mindful that some patterns can be defined as both modes depending on depending on where on the price chart they form um, this will become clearer once we dive into more detail in the future so right on the slide we have what's known as a bullish flag and a bullish pennant which are re really just variations of of uh, of the same formation. Uh, it's also the same for bearish bearish uh, 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 configurations. It's just to the downside. Um, these are these are bullish uh, flags and pennants are, are are frequent patterns on charts and and are often very very reliable, um, with price running higher or lower depending on obviously the direction, um, immediately following the breakout. Now you remember I said, uh, um, let me just annotate this just so it's easier for us to get. So you remember I said some traders um, are, are look at. So in in this case, this would be a throwback. Whoop, a throwback. So if price, this is another variation to watch out for. If once price breaks out of the pattern, a retest of the breached um, uh, upper boundary can form. Okay, but there, there's 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 been a study with um, a guy called Bukowski, his surname. He 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 runs a, a, a website called the Pattern Site, and he's done various tests on these on these formations and found that I believe that after a throwback forms or retest, the chances of the pattern reaching its take profit level are are greatly diminished. Whether that's true or not, I'm, you'd have to test for yourself. But um, yes, so this is something just to be aware of. So as I said, these, this is a bullish flag. Let me just uh, get rid of... Okay, they're still on there. So this is a bullish flag and a bullish pennant. And as I said, they are the same variations um, of each other. 
So these patterns are commonly found in the FX market and, and on all time frames. Something to be, bear in mind, though, is that most ac academic books, especially the ones that I've come across, state that although these are short-term patterns, um, patterns, uh, these are often said to form over from a few days up to 15 days. So three, so these can form up to three trading weeks. So I believe when the, what the textbooks are saying, these are better formed on the daily time frame, maybe even the H4 time frame. So it's more of a longer term approach, but um, many have found that these work on the lower time frame. So the M30, the H1. So um, again, this is something you'll have to test. Uh, if you want to incorporate these in your trading methodology. Both patterns are also considered, considered these are considered continuation uh, uh, patterns and are, are very uh, are seldom recognized as reversal structure as far as I've seen. So the flag is, um, the flag at this point is composed of a, a short channel, as you can see, a short descending channel. Uh, that generally slopes opposite to the uh, uh, prevailing trend uh, and formed by two parallel downtrend lines. Uh, the pennant uh, on the other side is, 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 is a short triangle formation that, that essentially does the same, only it's formed by two converging trend lines, so forming, so forming a cone structure. Now, for me, I always want to see and this goes for many technicians, I believe. I always want to see at least two points of contact to form these patterns. So as you can see, the bullish flag, uh, we need one. This is the first point of contact, and second point of contact, first point of contact, second point. So we need two points of contact at either side of the formation to be a valid flag or, or pennant. Another point I also want to make is these, these patterns should be preceded by a reasonably sharp up move. If they're not, they can be um, recognized as, as different patterns. So you'll, you'll be looking at something like a symmetrical triangle at that point, if there's no defined up move or anything like that. So it needs to be a defined up move. Another point um, is that the direction of these patterns as they are continuation patterns um, are usually against the, as you can see, against the, uh, this is the underlying trend and they, they usually form against the underlying um, uh, uh, trend. Um, this should be facing downwards if that's the case. Uh, but in stronger trends, um, you may see the direction. So let's work with the bullish flag. You may see the, the direction um, uh, uh, flatten out. So the direction of the pattern flatten out. So you could have a, let me just annotate this. So in, in really strong trends, you could have a flag pattern that uses horizontal. Let me just draw it up here. So this is a really strong trend. And then we have price forming a uh, flag pattern at this point here, which is a breaks out to the upside. Now in incredibly strong trends, you can also have flag patterns that are in line with the current uptrend. Now, this is not something I would ever trade personally. This one here, I would look at this one. I would take that into this into this into consideration, and also this one. But this one just seems a bit too um, aggressive for for my liking. And um, again, this is something you would need to test to to be sure it fits with your uh, trading approach. Okay, so the the price type. Let me just get rid of these drawings. Click. Okay, so the price target for these patterns following a successful breach to the upside. Now, again, guys, let me just reiterate that this is the same for a bearish pattern. It's only to the downside. So the following an upside breakout of the, uh, of the pattern at this point here and this point here, the take profit objective is measured by taking the um the distance from the beginning of the sharp up move to the first reversal point within the formation the same for the bullish pennant and what you do then is essentially take this value and apply and quite simply apply it to the breakout point 
as you can see, is simply extended. For anyone that uh, looks at, um, it's very, it's kind of similar, kind of similar to the AB equals CD formation, but not. It's kind of, but you essentially take the value from the sharp up move and apply that to the breakout point. Nothing more, nothing less. One final point. You may have heard, for anyone that follows flags and pennants, uh, the, these formations being referred to as half mast or, or um, I think they're half mast formations. Now they get this name because it implies that the that the um, that the formation forms roughly half half the half halfway between um, uh, halfway through the trend. So, so so this so imagine this is the uptrend starting at this point here this tells us that we are halfway through the trend and we could potentially see um all this move from this point you know uh this uh, again this is something that i've never tested so i cannot really comment on that um i have tested these in a short-term uh back test and they come out with about a 50%, a 55%, sorry, a 55% um, uh, win-loss ratio. And um, and yeah, most of them do hit take profit. But I must emphasize that I don't actually just, I didn't actually just test these. I tested these alongside other technical structures. So it's not a very reliable, you know, a, a very reliable um, um assessment for you guys if you if you want to just test these in isolation i i also incorporated support and resistance and also chart psychology so where these formed on the charts let me just give you a quick example of what i mean by that um so for instance if if i <clears throat> imagine we are we are in an uptrend and this is resistance okay and we have hit resistance but and we've hit resistance with strength which is one of the components of a uh, bullish up flag and then we are uh, ranging to the downside within parallel um uh, uh downward facing trend lines and we break out to the upside now if we break out to the upside here there's a very very good chance we are taking out this resistance so this is um uh something i i um I, I took into consideration following this you could also uh, you can also look at things like let me just undo that you can also look at things like if we've broken this is more reliable in fact if we've broken a resistance so this is a resistance to the left we break the resistance then as price pulls back if we're forming a retest of that uh, resistance turn support so this is the support level and we test that level and we break out to the upside uh, of the bullish flag we've then got confirmation from a chart pattern as well as technical structure um, you can also use moving averages you know moving averages also can offer dynamic support and resistance so for instance if a, if a um, moving average so the 200 or the 50 day sma converges with this area here fantastic another point i also use as, as i said at the beginning of my presentation are um are Fibonacci. So if you have all of this together, plus Fibonacci um, clusters at this point here, you have a very, very confluent trade and uh, with, with a high probability of price uh, 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 reaching the uh, take profit objective. Okay, let me just clear those. Oh, right, okay. So next up on the slide, we have the pound dollar on the M30. And this shows a bullish pennant pattern. The, the sharp, as you can see, there was a sharp move preceding the pennant formation. Uh, we also have two points, the two point contact test uh, uh, to form, to validate the, um, the, the formation. Uh, and you will also note on this occasion, price actually easily um exceeded the uh, take profit objective let me just draw that on so we're all on the same page so the sharp up move was here and we applied that to uh, i think that would have come to around this point here so yes it easily reached and exceeded the <clears throat> profit target also take into account given uh given the moves prior are also reasonably strong so here and here um, the uh, the pennant is formed uh, horizontally. You remember, if we we're, we're in a reasonably strong up move, 
um, the pennant formations can form in a horizontal fashion rather than against the overall trend. Uh, this is actually not the best example because um, as we would ideally want to see these form in uh, a defined uptrend. I guess you could say we are in a, a, in a small uptrend at this point here, but this is not really something that I would be happy with. Um, and there's not really much technical confluence that I can see on this chart to tell me that this would have been a good trade. Nevertheless, it did work out nicely. And um, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, point that out. Okay, so on to candlestick patterns uh, made famous, as I said, by the gentleman called Steve Neeson. Um, okay, we have a question. Could you please explain the difference between the deep retracement and shallow retracement? Are you referring to the um, to the to the um, the chart patterns I just recently uh, uh, looked at, or are you talking about the actual trend structure? If you could let me know. Are oh, you talking about the patterns? Okay, let, <coughs> excuse me. Let me get to that in a minute. Let me just cover the uh, uh, candle patterns and then we'll uh, just uh, uh, reverse back to that. So as I said, these were uh, uh, made famous by the gentleman uh, called Steve Neeson, uh, which we briefly, as I said, briefly discuss, uh, highlighted at the beginning of the webinar. For the purpose of this presentation, we'll focus on two individual candle patterns, as you can see, called the hammer and the shooting star. Do bear in mind, these are sometimes referred to as uh, uh, bullish whoops, uh, bullish and bearish pin bars or, or Pinocchio bars. I believe this was originally coined by uh, Martin Pring. So hammer candles at this point here are generally referred to, uh, sorry, generally found at uh, market troughs or lows and, and are considered uh, bullish signals. Therefore, we must ensure they are formed following a down move um, or a downtrend. Uh, the pattern structure is comprised, it's is very simple, it's very straightforward. It's comprised of a sm small real upper body um, uh, at the upper range of the candle formation uh, with, li with little to no upside upper shadow um, uh, being f uh, 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 is best and a lower shadow. Is the, and the lower shadow should be at least twice the size of the candle's real body. So as you can see, we have this uh, uh, in line here. Uh, the candle body is is irrelevant. So um, of course, it would be nice if this was a bullish um, uh, close, but it is really irrelevant. So it doesn't make any difference in terms of a, a candlestick presentation. For the shooting star uh, configuration, it's simply the mirror opposite. Um, of the hammer pattern and is you know is considered a bearish signal it's a bearish pattern so we want to see these formations form on pullbacks and um and uh within a downtrend again the candle body the can the real candle body must be at the uh, must form within the lower range and we must have little to no lower shadow with the upper shadow being at least twice the size of the uh, real candle body the psychology behind these two candles are, are again is relatively simple a hammer candle a hammer candle for example is uh, indicates a complete rejection from the uh, rejection of bears by the balls okay so um the long lower shadow uh, the long lower shadow to the downside shows us that uh, the bears were were able to push price downward uh, before bullish momentum, you know, emph emphatically pushes the price back up to the candlesticks opening price or or high price, and you know it's essentially the same for a shooting star, only uh, just just uh, formed around. So it's a mirror opposite. It's essentially the mirror opposite of um, uh, uh, the psychology. Also, do keep in mind these patterns are also found of you know trend line supports. They can use, be used to co uh, uh, confirm as a form of confirmation for trend line support, support and resistance levels, and they're often used as confirmation triggers. What I mean by that is we can never know if a support level or a resistance level will hold. I'm sure most of us here have traded and we expect this support level to hold and it just uh, crashes straight through. Though by waiting for additional candlestick confirmation, such as the hammer or shooting star, 
this may help elbow the odds in your in our favor a little more as we're essentially waiting for um, candlestick um, confirmation. Now, just really quickly, here's a chat. This is something I took from my daily market analysis. Um, as you can see, we have a, this is, I'm sorry if this confuses uh, some of the attendees here, but we have a Fibonacci projection here, a 1.272% Fibonacci projection at 116.09. This is the dollar yen weekly time frame. <clears throat> As you can see, we recently connected with this area and formed a shooting star. Following this, knowing we're coming off of uh, clear resistance, clear Fibonacci resistance, a large, I think it was about one. One one point two percent decline formed the week following. This is the current week's candle, by the way, and I think we are lower at the moment. Now, should this continue lower, obviously we could take out these lows and uh, shake hands with this support at one twelve uh, sixteen. Okay, Q and A. Let me just see this question. These questions. Okay, could you please explain the difference between deep retracement and shallow retracement? Okay, I don't believe I said. Uh, deep retracement um, on the patterns. Well, I, whoops, just bear with me. Let me just get back to that chart. So with this, this is what I, I assume you're referring to. So with the, if we're in, if we're in a reasonably strong up move, we can expect that this bullish flag will be horizontal or even ascending in line with the trend. It makes sense, right? Because if we're in a very strong up move, sellers are going to have less less control. So in this point, sellers do have some control, right? So if the trend is uh, sluggish, uh, but we have a strong up move here, we could have a, a um, bullish flag form against the underlying trend. And the same goes for the bullish um, bullish pennant. It's, it's really not, not much more to it than that. Um, if you're talking about the trend, so it's the same thing, really. If we're if we have a trend and there's shallow retracements going up, um, uh, so facing to the upside, so a shallow retracement here, shallow retracement here, this indicates that the uh, buyers are potentially are still in the driving seat and there's a, a little sign that um, that sellers are gaining strength. However, if you do see a trend with deep retracements, that, that's a sign, especially if we're coming off strong, if we're, if we're heading on to, um, heading towards you know, healthy long-term resistance, then that could be a sign that we are we are heading lower. I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, so are there any more questions regarding um, this, the content? Um, okay, I don't see any other questions. So Again, you're either all asleep or you're, you've all followed along nicely, which is um, which is fantastic. In that case, okay, I sincerely hope that um, some of the newer traders here were able to walk away from this presentation more more knowledgeable. Uh, the last webinar of the month to look out for is uh, fundamental analysis for beginners on the 27th, 27th at the, uh, the same time as today. Um, as always, <clears throat> if there are any specific topics you would like the team here to talk about, please be sure to send in your suggestions to, as you can see on the screen, either support at fpmarkets.com or alternatively directly to the research department at market analyst at fpmarkets.com. No problem. No problem, Sombit. That's excellent. <clears throat> so um, also do make sure to register the for the FP Markets Telegram channel to get instant updates. Uh, we post there daily um throughout most of the uh, throughout the major se sessions so the sign up tab can be found at the uh, lower left part of the fp markets website alternatively you can just click the link in our chat box and um, you'll be taken directly to the telegram channel okay so on that note thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to attend this presentation again i really hope you took something from it and any comments any suggestions please do fire them across to the uh, noted emails have a great day and i'll see you all again very very soon thank you <laughs>